The bad news is that measuring uh, disability progression in multiple sclerosis is not easy and there is no perfect way to do it. The good news is that we've learned a lot over the last 15 to 20 years about how to do that and sort of put together a number of ways that we do it to com come up with a composite that enables us to fairly accurately um, portray disability progression in, in multiple sclerosis patients. I don't think there's one best way. The traditional way we've used in our clinical trials for the last 20 years is something called the EDSS. And the good thing about it is that it mainly measures walking speed. So it's very simple to time the patient in their ability to walk a specified time or distance. And it can be reproduced easily across many different medical centers and sites around the world for a large trial. However, it doesn't measure things like cognition, memory, and processing speed. So one patient may have impaired walking but function very well, where another patient may walk fine but be very impaired due to, to mental and cognitive dysfunction. So we've come up with some other measures, things called the MSFC, that do try and measure cognition and memory, because this is a major reason many of our patients do have to stop working or have difficulty functioning in their day-to-day -day lives. We also come up with biometric measures that we use here at Montefiore Medical Center, things like OCT, which directly measures the integrity of the myelin sheath and the neuronal axons at the back of the eye, as well as special MRI biometric measures of atrophy that we know correlate to disability progression in various ways. This is, a, this is important going forward into the future with our clinical trials because we want to have more information to tell our patients what is likely to happen to them in the future. We have great data on what our new treatments do in terms of preventing relapses, and we, it does appear that preventing relapses delays and limits disability progression in the short term, but we have less data so far on how much our newer treatments affect long-term progression over the next 20 to 30 years of our patients' lives. What I use in my own practice in multiple sclerosis is sort of a combination of a few things. Number one, I talk to the patient and I examine the patient. So uh, when I see the patients in my clinic, I'm asking them how things are going, uh, and I'm trying to correlate that with my neurological exam. And the main things that you're probably gonna come across in a day-to-day -day practice situation are cognitive problems, visual problems, and walking. Probably also bladder and bowel to, to some degree. So these are things that you need to focus on when you're seeing these patients in your clinic. Um, so I tend to focus my questions in those directions. And then I correlate whatever the patient tells me with what I see on exam. So I'm gonna focus in on things like the mental status exam, the cranial nerve exam, particularly the visual exam. I'm going to look at their coordination, which is a certain ways we do that in neurology to look at coordination or cerebellar function. And I'm going to look at their strength. I'm going to look at uh, how spastic they are or what their reflexes look like. And I'm going to look at how they walk or if they're able to walk. So these are all very important things really on a research basis as well as on a practical clinical basis to look at when you're following patients in your clinic. And you need to document that very carefully in the, in the record to, so that you can go back whenever it was that you saw that patient before, six months before that, and look at what you said in that exam and in that history and compare it to what you're getting now.